All right, so, so I was in uh, need of some uh, CPU thermo compound, therm thermal compound for this computer here. So I ordered some online from Tiger Direct, and uh, that was March 26th. I ordered it, and it finally arrived. Today being the 5th of April, and so I was going to open it up and. Uh, this unboxing stuff seems popular, so I thought I'd do one just for fun. You know, it's the first package I've had in a while. So I'm going to open it up here with my knife, a Winchester folding pocket knife, and get it out. So, the first thing you'll know, thinking is that little syringe, oh yeah, little syringe, here it is. Syringe filled with the uh, thermal compound, Thermal Fusion 400 from Cooler Master. It comes with a little spreader applicator. Alright, so there's that. that the Alright, there's the bill. And... Just shipping material and a huge box for such a small thing, but I guess it's kind of difficult to lose this in the mail. Alright, throw that down. Let's see, take a look at this. Uh, high thermal conductivity, non-curing. Okay, good, non-curing. That's the stuff I wanted because some of the stuff, it's like a glue and it'll stick the CPU to the heat sink, which is just a real pain, which I had a problem with in this one that that happened. Talk about that later. Uh, non corrosive, low thermal resistance. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, for industrial use only. Wow, I can see that uh, my setup here is a little less industrial than you can imagine. Do, do, do not swallow, keep out of reach of children, avoid contact with ice. Alright, so I'll cut this open and then I'll apply it to the CPU. This will actually be the first time I've applied this stuff to a CPU, so. Hopefully I won't make a mess. Alright, I got the uh, packaging all taken apart and got the syringe of compound. Alright, so now uh, I'm going to take the CPU cooler off because I, I put it all back together. And uh, so I'll take the CPU cooler off by snapping this release mechanism. Okay. Maybe it'll take the little hooks out and it should just come pop right off. Like so. So here's the bottom of the CPU cooler. Milled aluminum. Pretty heavy actually. Now yeah, put that up up here. And now that exposes the socket seven fifty four processor. The AMD Sempron 2600 Plus, I believe it is. Maybe not Plus, but anyway, 2600. Lots of little pins on the bottom. 754, I think, is, uh, is the number. And so, so the story with this computer goes is that my grandpa was having so much problem with it that uh, he just finally gave up trying to get it working and got a new computer and gave this one to me. And the problem was that the old power supply in it the fan had failed in there and the thing had overheated and there were blowing capacitors in there. It was a huge mess, it just sprayed everywhere inside. So that was one of the problems. And the other problem was that he didn't have the proper graphics drivers for the integrated graphics card. And it took me a while to find those. It was just, it was not easy. And, uh, and the sound wasn't working properly. So and he was running Windows 98 on the thing for a while and it was just not working for him so I got a new computer I got this one put more RAM in it and uh, if you've seen this, uh, see my other videos other video I was trying to fix an old another power supply I still actually have it, it's sitting over there uh, I had to put it in here but that didn't work out so I got this power supply from the dump and it works now I was having some problems too with this after a while that it would not turn on 
and so I was just sitting around in my in my room for a couple months until uh, I was fiddling around with it, realized that the CPU had wiggled loose from the 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 uh, socket. Well, that's not actually true. I didn't figure it out. I was going to throw out the motherboard and just keep the CPU because I figured it was still good and the motherboard was fried. But it turned out that this had just loosened a little bit and one of the jumpers wasn't set properly. And so it works after that. So, uh, so now I'm going to put the goo on here. Yeah. So a funny thing with these socket 754s is this little locking pin here. You drop the uh, processor in and push this down and two plates slide past one another, locking all the pins in place. Now when I took this out, the CPU, uh, the, the aluminum here, it was stuck like this. It was stuck on there and I could not get it out. And I could not power the system up. So I figured I'll just, just yank on it, right? Not really thinking about how this was, how this mechanism worked. And so I yanked on it, pulled the whole unit out. So this was stuck right on there, like so. And uh, and to get it off, uh, some people recommended heating the heat sink with a blow dryer or whatever. I just uh, filled a little container with water, hot water, and filled it up to about here and let it sit and put the whole unit in the, I took the fan off of course, put the whole unit in this warm water for 5-10 minutes, let the heat sink warm up, let the stuck thermal component, it was really sticky stuff, it was really stuck on there, let that heat up too and just twisted it off and pulped it off and then cleaned it up. So that worked out and used some water and cleaned up the surface. So anyway, now I'm finally going to put this thing in. Finally going to spread the paste on there and see how that works. So I got to put this back in place. So I'll put that up and drop these in like so. Lock that up. Now I'm going to just check if we're still recording here. Yes, still recording. So I think right now I'm going to pause the video because I've been talking a long time and I may want to edit it a bit. So I'm going to stop the video. All right, we're back a couple of seconds later and I've zoomed in a bit just to show you the CPU and uh, for a close-up view. And so now I'm going to apply the paste and I've heard that the best idea is to put just a small amount, I'm clean this up, put just a small amount on there and spread it around so you get a nice thin layer, uh, thin layer until the text here, the laser etched text is visible somewhat underneath the paste because you don't you don't need a huge quantity of this stuff for it to work properly. In fact, the, the least amount you can apply is the best. So I'll put a bit in the middle. Still some, and get some spittle on there. Alright, so I'll put a little bit. Pea-sized amount, I think, was the recommendation. Pop that back. Okay. Use a little, uh, included little spreader. Yeah, and uh, go to it. Now I heard some people use like uh, like an old credit card or or something like that. I'm going to use this thing because it's kind of neat. I've already made a mess on the side. You can't see it, but I've dropped some of the compound down beside the onto the socket. This is probably too much. stuff. Now I was running the CPU or running this computer without the paste and using the BIOS temperature reading it was only 40 degrees or so. So that's not too bad. I mean it wasn't 
I wasn't stressing it, but uh, it's probably a good idea to not run the computer too long without this. Alright, so now I made a little bit of a mess. Now apparently this stuff is non-conductive for of electricity anyway, non-conductive for electricity, but it will conduct heat of course. So it shouldn't cause a huge problem if it gets on the motherboard, but I'm going to clean it up. All right, that's better. So then I'll take the CPU. It only fits on one way, I think. Take the CPU. Set it on top. Like so. That locking mechanism. That locking mechanism. Nope, didn't click it. Nope, it's not on. There we go. There we are. Good, good. That's on. And, uh... Yeah. Alright. That's good. So. Now time to power up the computer. Oh, well, first I gotta hook up the thing here, the cable. I'll zoom out a bit. Out. Or you connect the 20 pin, looks like 20 pin power connector, uh, the IDE cables, power switch, maybe not this fan, I don't need the fan, and uh, we have Linux, <laughs> Ubuntu, so yeah, I'll get to that. Alright, so uh, I made it to the BIOS there, second time around, because first time I missed the uh, boot up screen. Anyway, here we'll go to PC health status, and the temperature of the CPU says it's 32 degrees. So, it's already 8 degrees cooler than uh, without the paste. 32? Zoom in a little bit. Yeah, 32 degrees. Got the shutdown at 60. So uh, I would say that it's successful. The uh, paste is successfully doing its job. So that's good. The only, yeah, ah, uh, yeah. So good. Now I'm just mumbling. Uh, yeah. 3000 RPM, that's time for our BIOS update. So I may have jumped the gun a bit saying that the uh, temperature was only 32 degrees. That was on a cold boot. So after it's been running for a while and uh, running in the Ubuntu environment for half an hour or so, uh, the temperature had gone up to 39 degrees. So right now it's 37, 38, 37. So I'm betting the, the compound is working properly, but I was just a little preemptive with my assessment that uh, it was dramatically different temperature. So, oh well, live and learn.